Hello again, fellow RC enthusiasts. It's your host, Tom Cogswell from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC, here again for another quick hit tech tip tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over how to set up a fairly basic dual rate switch. So we're gonna set up a three position dual rate switch, and I'm gonna go over how to set it all on one switch, or if you wish, to set up your aileron, elevator, and rudder on different switches. So aileron would be roll, rudder would be yaw, and elevator would be pitch. So you may hear me refer to it in either way during this video. So let's get started. So we have started out here with a fresh new model that has been bound to our AR620. And I have this servo arm here just to kind of show you guys the movement that you're gonna get when we set up some dual rates. And that'll make more sense as we go along. Now, as we're getting started here, one thing to keep in mind is that I am on the latest firmware of the, at the time, which is 2.05. Dual rates have essentially been the same, but we have made some improvements to it. So if you guys are having trouble with dual rates, I would recommend updating your radio. We have a video that I'll link into the top right corner here or in the comments below that you guys can use to figure out how to update your radio. All right, so let's go to the dual rate menu. The dual rate menu is simply the second one down when you click on the scroll wheel and you go to the function list. And you'll notice here, I am using a DX6E, but this is the same for pretty much any Spectrum radio with a screen on it. Even the fancy iX20 and iX12 with the color touch screen and Android interface, this screen is pretty much the same thing. With the so this is what we'll see right when we get to the dual rate menu. At the top, you'll see channel, and we're on aileron for roll. You'll have curve, and you'll have the dual rate percentage, the expo percentage, and the switch that it's on. Currently, when it says on, that means that this is always on. Curve one is always on, no matter what switch you hit. But let's say you wanna have a high, mid, and low aileron rate. What you'd wanna do is go down to switch. So we're gonna go to our scroll wheel. We're gonna go down to switch. We're gonna click on it. You'll see the uh, light will start flashing or the box will start flashing around it. If it's an iX20, you just tap on it and you literally just flip the switch. So whatever switch you like to use for aileron or roll dual rate, you'll flip it. I'm just gonna use a, oh, we wanna use a three position switch. That's right, so we're gonna use the B switch. All right, right when you flip that, what it does, and you might've noticed, is it automatically selects it for you and it automatically assigns the appropriate curve to these boxes down here. Let's talk about these little boxes down here for a second. This is important. These boxes, when it is blacked in like that, means that is the switch position that is assigned to that curve. That's very important. If I clicked on zero and it erased the black kind of highlight to it, what that does is it makes it so that curve zero is no longer assigned to it. And this curve, position zero is not gonna do, well, it's gonna, it's gonna be 100% rate, but it's not gonna have any sort of dual rate assigned to it. So a lot, what a, a lot of people will do is they'll just start fiddling around with it, not really sure what they're doing, and they'll start clicking these boxes. What you could do is if I wanted to, I could assign curve zero to positions zero and one. Right? And then when I flip the switch, you'll see that there's this little black marker right underneath the, the bottom, a little black marker there. When I flip the switch, you'll see that it'll actually move that little guy. So that's an indicator of what the switch position is. And this curve zero is on both zero and one. But then when I flip to position two, it'll say, oh, you're on curve two. So at this point, we have essentially a two position because we have the curve zero on zero and one, and then curve two is on uh, curve two is on the two position. But I did that jesting that I was making a mistake. Really, I don't think that's very useful. I mean, some people might find a, a function for doing it that way. Uh, but let's say you didn't want that to happen. You're going to click on the one here put the switch in this position, and you'll notice because I clicked on one and assigned it to curve zero in this position, I had it on both, uh, both switch positions were on curve zero, 
it has erased or enabled this position. So simply, if you do this, go to curve, and then go to curve two, or curve one rather, go to curve one, go down to one, the box one, and select it. Now the switch will work properly. So let's go ahead and assign some dual rates here for our servo here. Personally, I like to use the switch position furthest away from me, or all the way up, that you'd like to call it, as the high rate position. So I'll leave that at 100%. And normally in high rate, you wanna have a bit higher of an expo. For a lot of our bind and fly planes, we recommend a 30% expo, but really it depends on the size of the control surface. If it's a fast plane or something with a lot of control authority because it has large control surfaces, say like a 3D plane or a 3D helicopter, you'd want to go a little higher. So on my 3D planes, I usually start at about 40, 50 even if it's a very reactive plane and I'll go down from there. But for a lot of our bind and fly planes, we do recommend 30%. So that's what I'll get up to, 30%. And you'll notice here on this curve graph here, this is very helpful. It actually moves the expo, the, the line, the input line, to map out that expo curve. So expo stands for the exponential of the curve. It, it, if you guys remember some basic arithmetic back in middle school, you might remember what exponential does in an equation. So, so this 30% exponential adds a, a dip in the curve that really it deadens the movement around center stick. So when I'm moving the stick, this position, of this, this tiny bit amount is now less because I added in positive expo. Now we do use positive expo. Some manufacturers will use a negative expo number for spectrum. You want to use a positive number here. And then simply to set up our mid rate curve, I'll flip the switch, the box will change over and now we're on curve one. This will be on my mid rate. Let's say 80%, I'll, I'll make my mid rate. And then I'll go to, let's say 20% for the expo. One thing I'll do is, and this is just my personal preference, is I'll look at this graph and for all three of my positions, I'll make it feel like that the center stick is about the same position. I'll kind of explain that here. So let's say our dual rate for low rate are completely low rate, let's set it to 50. And then for this one, I may not even use any expo because it's so low. So the lower the dual rate, the lower the expo that you'll wanna put in. That's normally the rule of thumb. Um, so looking at this graph, I'll kinda of keep my eye on where the small movements are at. So if you look at this, this graph to the right, when I move the stick, you'll see this little point here. And I'll, I'll kind of feed in a little bit of input and I'll flip my switch and I'll see if I'm ending up at around the same place. And the reason I do that, uh, just because, and, and this, like I said, it's for my own personal preference, but you guys, if you're beginners, you might try it this way, so that I don't have drastically different controls around center stick when I flip my switch. So I'm a pinch flyer. I use very small movements to fly. See how it's very small movements. And when I want to change my rate, these small movements aren't making a drastic change on the servo. So that's where we have our aileron, our roll set up. Let's go ahead and set up a uh, elevator. So up at the top here where it says channel, you'll want to choose that, click on that box, scroll over to elevator. And essentially we'll do the same thing for elevator. We're gonna go down to switch, we're going to choose one switch. If you want it to be the same switch, flip the same switch. I personally like to use the same switch for many of my planes, unless it's a pattern plane. Uh, sometimes 3D planes, I'll put them on different switches. But let's do it on the same switch. So our elevator rate is now on the same switch as our aileron dual rate, switch B, which is a three position switch. And just like aileron, I'll put in the expo. Usually I map it about the same as aileron because it's on the same stick. I want it to kind of feel the same either way. Kind of depends on you, again, personal preference. And that's really what dual rates are, is it's a big personal preference thing. Our manuals will give you kind of a guideline of where you want to start at uh, and what we felt like was appropriate for that model, but that's up to you. Everybody has a different feel, everybody flies a little differently, and 
that's how it is. It's a personal preference thing. So I'll set that to 30. I'll flip the switch. I'll set this one to 80. With 20 Expo. And then I'll set this one dual rate to 50. And now, when I flip my switch, it's on, they're all in the same position, on the same switch. So my low rate is low rate ele elevator and aileron at this point. And if I flip my switch while I'm holding it, oh, hopefully you guys can see all that. Flip my switch, hold the stick, you'll see the servo move accordingly because my throws are reduced in my low rate mode. And then let's say we want to put rudder, our yaw movement, on a different three position switch. Simply as just as before, we'll select it, the box around it will start flashing, and let's say we want to use the G switch. We just flip it, and we're good to go. Now our rate, rudder rate is on a different switch than our elevator and aileron. And you can put it on any switch. You can even put dual rates, in some cases, on like the roller, or if you had like a trimmer, uh, the I button, it's up to you. But really, I mean, the switches are, that's what they're there for. Um, and then we could just go through. Oh, I put it on this one. So, so then we just go through and I don't need to do it again and assign, like I said, you just flip the switch, change the numbers, flip the switch to the next position, change the numbers and so on and so forth. And that's it for how to set up dual rates on a three position switch featuring the <clears throat> and that's how to set up dual rates on a three position switch featuring the spectrum dx6e like i said this is the same for pretty much any dx radio and the ix radios hopefully that helped you guys set up dual rates on your spectrum radio if you have any other questions or comments or suggestions for more quick hit tech tip videos feel free to leave them in the comments below this is tom signing off Happy flying, everybody.